years, um, the um, International Court of Justice will rule tomorrow uh, on the complaint by South Africa against uh, Israel. Uh, you and I and many of your colleagues who've come on the show, some of your, some of them, your former colleagues in the military and the State Department, uh, are of the view um, uh, that South Africa made a very strong case. The ruling is going to come down at seven o'clock in the morning, um, Eastern uh, time. What will happen, as you know, is that this will go to the Security Council. And the Americans and, and probably their British puppets will uh, veto it. So that's where it will die. But I would think, assuming that they rule in South Africa's favor, I, I would think that if they do rule in South Africa's favor, this is just terrible uh, for the Israelis in the PR war around the world. Don't you agree? It's another blow. Uh, I listened to Yossi Alper. Um, his formulation was this way. And, and Yossi's not... He's he's not a bleeding heart, but Yossi says, okay, he's being harassed majorly by the Israeli people, even came into the command room, even came into the Knesset, um, who want their hostages back. So he's saying to them, I'm going to get your hostages back. On the other hand, he's saying complete victory is all I'll accept. Complete wiping out of Hamas is all. Those are incompatible objectives. Yes. They can't be met. And I think Dora Lieberman was right when he opined <laughs> just a day or so afterwards. He said, it's all about politics. He doesn't want to go to jail. He wants to stay in office. As long as he's in office, he can't go to jail. So he wants to stay in office. He wants to drive this war all the way to the next election that they hold. This is insane. I mean, now we got domestic politics in Israel and Netanyahu, the worst possible aspect of those domestic politics, wrapped up in this bloody war. I don't know if you know this uh, General Eisenkot, who was the the time that uh, Colin Powell was Secretary of State. General yeah. Eisenkot was uh, Chief of Staff of the uh, IDF. He's retired. He's a major general. He's now uh, in the Israeli War Cabinet. Uh, he himself said, uh, forget about the war. We need a, a major long-term um, uh, ceasefire. That's the only way we're going to get the hostages back. And we need an election. This is back to what you were just saying, Colonel. We yeah. need an election in the next 60 days because Netanyahu has to go. He is just the wrong person at the wrong time to be leading uh, Israel. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's a major fissure, I would think, in his cabinet. He, of course, is still, correct me if you, if you think I'm wrong, captive of the extremists in that cabinet, who, if they break away from his coalition in the Knesset, he doesn't have a majority anymore. And what you're saying there could lead to the fall of Israel as a state. I mean, I'm, that sounds, you know, I've been saying Israel won't be here as a state in 20 years, not if it continued on the same course it was on for the last year or two. But I'm looking at it now as if maybe my prediction was a little far out into the future. We could be looking at the combination of the South African case, the United Nations and the angst that's going to come out of there after this, the Ukraine war and what that's doing to our reputation with four plus billion people in the world. We could be looking at what we're doing to the Houthis. We could be looking at what's happening in the region in general. And we could be looking at Israel having an unten such an untenable future that even the great superpower being behind her is not enough to save her. And that worries me in another dimension, too, because then they're going to look to make this a much bigger war. And I heard this morning that they're looking very closely, Netanyahu in particular, at making sure they start the war with and pursue it vigorously, Hezbollah. Well, they can't start a war against Hezbollah. They don't pick a fight against somebody they, that uh, they can't beat, and they can't beat Hezbollah. Hezbollah well, whipped them last time around. We'll see. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. Here's uh, <laughs> reading a speech that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's folks had written for him. The Middle East is suffering from a cancer, and up until today, the Security Council has only ever discussed providing aspirin. Cancer, Mr. President, is not treated with aspirin. Can you imagine Hitler's foreign minister participating in a serious discussion on how to defend the Jews during the Holocaust?
Without Iran, the Houthis would not have advanced cruise missiles or UAVs to target merchant vessels in the Red Sea. And as we all know, Iranian drones are being used by Russia to kill civilians in Ukraine. Iran's terror will reach all of you. I've misspoken. That speech may have been written not by a, by a BB's people, but by Senator Graham. I'm not sure. I'm being a little sarcastic. <laughs> but what you were seeing were diplomats and ambassadors leaving the uh, Security Council meeting rather than uh, listening uh, to what he, he had to say. I don't blame them for leaving. Israel thumbs its nose at the UN all the time. And if the ICJ rules against Israel tomorrow morning, I'm sure that Prime Minister Netanyahu is going to uh, invoke the Holocaust and thumb his nose at the ICJ again. I'm sure he will. And, and I think that argument, just like the argument of uh, self-loathing Jews and anti-Semites and so forth, is losing a lot of its steam. Most of the people in the world who are looking at Israel right now are not anti-Semitic. What they are is anti-hegemon, anti-killing, anti-murderer, anti-barbarism. That's hard. And that's what, that's what they're seeing. And I'm really worried about how they get this to the point where they can hide it in a major regional war.